Welcome everyone. This is episode 25 of Audacity, the Velocity OKC show. I'm Nate Fisher. I'm the director of communications at the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber. Uh, you may notice that we're missing our usual co-host, Kaylee McDaniel Kale. She has actually moved on from the chamber, uh, so we wish her well. But uh, we did want to go ahead and take advantage of an opportunity that we have to speak with the executive director of the Paseo Arts Association, Amanda Bleakley, and the owner of Paseo Pottery, Mr. Colin Rosebrook. And uh, we had a chance to talk to them today about some of the things that are going on in the Paseo District and also specifically uh, the Paseo Arts Festival, which is coming up. Yes. So, yes. yeah, the Paseo Arts Festival, this is a mainstay of the kind of the Oklahoma City experience over Memorial Day weekend. And so that is getting ready to come up. And so we're excited to hear a little bit about that. But first, I wanted to get a little bit about... Think about if you were brand new to Oklahoma City and you haven't been here before and you made your way down to the top of Paseo Drive and you looked down Paseo and you thought, what the heck is going on? Give us a little bit of kind of what's the history of the kind of the Paseo district in general? Well, gosh, if we go all the way back, <laughs> uh, uh, G.A. Nichols developed this uh, neighborhood in 1929 and it has been a lot of different things over the years. Um, and uh, but I think it's really when the uh, the arts and uh, the artists in the community got together and started doing some things down here where the changes started happening. So um, the first Paseo Art Festival was in 1977, mm-hmm. and um, then the Paseo Arts Association was developed in 1981. And when you come for a visit here, you're going to see a beautiful. Uh, two block by two block area, curved uh, with buildings that are painted all different colors with the terracotta Mexican tiles, mm-hmm. and it's just it's hidden. I like to think it's a hidden jewel in the middle of Oklahoma City. So um, unless you know it's here, you might drive right by it because we're not in a major thoroughfare. Right. So um, it's really um, when people come here from out of town, they love this. They love the area. Uh, they love the idea that it's very walkable, that they can park, and it's real easy to walk the the two block area. Right, and visit all sorts of galleries and shops, and lots of restaurants, and um, lots right. of lots of cool experiences to be mm-hmm. had. Here, mm-hmm. so. And yeah, and, and actually, one of those experiences is can be had in this place that we're sitting. This is the Paseo Arts and Creativity Center, and this is a pretty new addition to the Paseo. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know it's <laughs> it is. It's, we've it had is. a couple pieces on Velocity about the PACC, <laughs> so if you haven't read those, please do. But so the Paseo Arts Association manages the Paseo Arts and Creativity Center, which is a new space for us as of. May of 2020, and uh, we we were actually next door in a much smaller space. Uh, this space became available at, kind of at the beginning of the pandemic, and so, um, but I just knew that this was the right thing for us to do, and so we uh, we did a capital uh, campaign or a capacity building campaign, is what I like to say, and raised some money and made the move, and we've just kind of been building on it ever since. So now we have uh, a gift shop that's, uh, that, that handles or carries only Oklahoma artists, uh, artwork, and, um, and, and then Oklahoma vendors as well. We have two art galleries. We have a photography studio, and we also have uh, 12 studio spaces that we have artists that rent from us in the back. And so they can work here. They can show their work and sell their work here all in one spot. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, and Colin, why don't you, that's a good segue, why don't you tell us a little bit about Paseo Pottery and um, some of your work, and I know you've been here for, in the Paseo for a long time, and talk a little <laughs> bit about sort of some of the changes that you've seen since then. Oh gosh, it's a night and day difference. You know, when we first came, uh, we came and got the studio over there. It's been, this is our 32nd year, so it was a boarded up laundry cleaners. Wow. But growing up, up in Oklahoma City, I remember always even driving down the street to see the characters that are here. And I always had this sort of thought that it would be a great place to have a studio. And after visiting Taos and Santa Fe and that sort of thing, I thought Oklahoma City has got just as much character and possibilities as anywhere else. So uh, finding that space was perfect for a clay studio, giant gas lines, giant water lines and drain lines. So... 
we set up shop there, and it's the rest is history, you might say. And you go in, he has a huge kiln inside, so he does he fires all of his his student work and his work as well. It's really neat. Awesome, awesome. People can go and see that as part of um, uh, the first Friday experience. Mm-hmm. How about your opening hours in general? Uh, generally, we are there uh, Tuesday through Saturday, pretty much every day uh, till five. We have eight o'clock on Tuesdays, which is mainly our class day. Okay. We we run lots and lots of students. We probably have sixty plus students that go in and out of there, and it's become more of a, like the Paseo itself, a community versus just someone taking classes. I have people that have been quote taking classes for twenty years, you know. So they're it's more of their. Um, Fixed expense for the year. Yeah. Where they're, they're he has a waiting chosen. list to get in. No, so. Very cool, very cool. So we have a 100 cubic foot kiln. Uh, it's, I would say, state of the art then. The materials that I built it out of are still the same. So uh, we we really do, uh, it's a working studio, a teaching studio, a gallery. We do sculptures in the back and you know welding and that sort of thing as well. Awesome. So we have lots of fun. Awesome, very cool, very cool. Okay, well, so tell us a little bit about the festival. Let's talk. About, let's shift gears a little bit to the Paseo Arts Festival. Like I said, mainstay for Memorial Day weekend in Oklahoma City. We're kind of back on track, right? Yes, so we thank had goodness. A couple of, <laughs> we had to make some shifts, as everybody did over the last couple of years, and uh, but now we're sort of back on track for Memorial Day weekend. Right. So last year, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we had to move the festival from Memorial Day to Labor Day weekend. Um, which was okay because the previous year in 2020, we had to cancel it all together, which was a huge disappointment for everyone. I know uh, people look forward to this every year. They love to come. I, we have people that come in from all, um, out of state uh, to visit with their friends for the weekend and come to the festival. Um, a lot of our artists are from out of state, and the art community really suffered from not being able to have the festival. But, yes, we are back on track. It's going to be May 28th, 29th, and 30th. Um, we have uh, almost 100 artists. We have uh, about 18 food and drink vendors, two stages of, with music going, um, music and some entertainment. We have 52 groups. Mm. So... It's kind of a big deal yeah. in in such a small neighborhood, right? And with a small crew, but <laughs> but we make it really nice, and we uh, we every year we invite the community to come out. Um, we have a shuttle that runs the entire uh, time of the uh, festival, so parking isn't an issue because if you try to come down here and park, you won't find a place. But <laughs> but uh, we'll direct you on where you can park. Uh, it's just a really good time. It's a community event, and everyone does look forward to it every year. Uh, they bring their children and their dogs, and it's a lot of fun. It's free. Um, even the that. even the children's <laughs> events are free. The music's free. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's just kind of a, a the spring rite of passage. Everyone right. enjoys coming down here. And we love the fact that we can make the arts accessible to Everyone, that uh, you're going to come and you're going to see all different kinds of mediums, photography, glass, painting, um, sculpture, and things that you're not going to see every day or even in a museum. Uh, but you're going to see them at our festival. And our artists do. They come from all over the country, from Florida to California. It's, it's, it's just really, and it is top-notch quality. Yeah, absolutely. If, if anybody hasn't been to the festival before, this is definitely worth your time to come and check out. Um, like she said, lots of different things to see, lots of different artists from all mm-hmm. over, um, high quality work. Um, it's a really fun time. It's it's just a really good. What I like about it is just the general vibe is very. Um, it's very social and it's very happy and it is. people it's- are in a good mood and it's you know all the food and the music and yeah, lots of fun. Well, we just we have a great setting here. We mm-hmm. have this beautiful uh, district, the, the street, and it even though it's small, it does lend itself to having a festival. And so you've got all the other businesses are open at the same time. So if you want to pop in and, and check out what we have regularly here yeah. at the at, at, during the festival or, or, or all year round. Um, they're here, or if you just need to get a little bit of air conditioning, um, <laughs> it's 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 usually not too bad, except 
September was a little bit hot. Right. So <laughs> May is not quite so bad. Right. But yeah, it's 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 unlike any other type of festival. Very cool, very cool. And there are a lot of other festivals in Oklahoma, <laughs> and they go come one month after the other. Uh-huh. But uh, but ours is very unique. Colin, you're the mm-hmm. owner of Paseo Pottery, longtime member of the Paseo community. What does the festival mean to you, and um, what propels you to be so involved in the festival each year? Well, for me, it's uh, kind of coming back home, because uh, I did festivals really for a living, coast to coast. Mm. So I try to bring all those things I've learned and those things I've participated in to come back to Paseo to basically make it the best. You know, I've been into shows who, uh, to get into the show is kind of a coveted thing. And right now we have lots and lots of artists around the country who try to enter the show. And what sets the Paseo Arts Festival uh, apart, I think, is that we have category judges. It's not just like, uh, say, a curator from a museum who judges the show mm. or nothing against that, but mm-hmm. we have those that are professional in the field. So uh, a photographer uh, will judge photography, a glass blower okay. do glass, and, and that sort of thing. So I think that ups the quality and assures that these are things that are really well done. Right. And it's it's... You know, we want to make it the best. Yeah. So the ambiance in the area, I mean, people have even told me that they feel justified to dress even a certain way when they come down the Paseo. <laughs> you know, their our inner artist comes out. Uh-huh. You know, it's a colorful event. Right, so we, right. we enjoy doing that. Very nice. Okay, very cool. Well, and that's the other thing that we should mention, too, is the uh, Arts Festival is actually a fundraiser. Um, so let's... Talk a little bit about that. How does the funding enable enable the uh, Paseo Arts Association to uh, kind of continue its mission? Well, I like to say that the festival is a community event first and a fundraiser second, uh, because you know we don't it's not we don't make a ton of money because of all the expenses that we have to put into it, but we do make some, um, and that helps us um, sustain our budget year round. Uh, we do other fundraising. We write grants. Um, we have a membership program here. So we have a, a, a multiple revenue stream that helps keep things going. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the festival is our biggest one, and we're always looking for new sponsors. And, um, and we're also always looking for volunteers. Right, yeah. So that's another great way to, uh, uh, to help contribute to the festivals, uh, to, uh, to volunteer. So tell us a little bit about some of the volunteer opportunities that uh, people may be able to take advantage of here. Well, um, because the Paseo Arts Association is just a very small, two and a half employees, basically, <laughs> we rely heavily on our uh, committee volunteers and volunteers uh, from the general public to come out. It takes about 400 volunteers oh, to wow. manage a three-day art festival. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and you know, we don't take that lightly. I, I know what the commitment is to, to volunteer, and, and, and we really we couldn't do it without them. I have people that look forward to it every year. They get a free T-shirt that says volunteer on it, mm-hmm. and they also get a free drink ticket uh, for beer or soda, whatever they want. Nice. So, yeah, and it's a three-hour shift, so it's not... Okay. A huge, you know. Not a huge time commitment. Not a huge, yeah. Right, right. Something yeah. fun, an easy way to give back. I was just going to say, there's so many different areas that you can volunteer. Yeah. The stage, we have a kids kids area, kids art area that they come in. The, the kids get uh, creative and that sort of thing. That's really a big one. And then mm-hmm. we have our drink booths where we sell sell all of the refreshments that they need during the, the their stay here. Very nice, very nice. All right, yeah, so that's great. So we're back, back in Memorial Day weekend, sort of the uh, uh, the niche of this particular festival. And, yeah, talk a little bit about that. We were just speaking off camera about sort of how this festival has its sort of niche in the calendar of right. Oklahoma City's art so, scene. And- so I think that all the festivals in Oklahoma have their weekend. And uh, when we have a disruption, then everything changes. Mm-hmm. And we we all respect each other, so we don't want to step on anybody's dates and in uh last year we had to shift and so everybody had shifted their dates and we're very excited to be able to go back to the the order our festivals are all a little different sometimes we share some of the same artists but um mostly they're 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 different artists and uh and so yeah i think being back memorial day weekend everybody is you know they depend on it being that weekend right 
Yes, yeah, for sure. Colin and Amanda are going to hang out for a little bit while we sort of wrap up with some things that are happening in kind of the Oklahoma City area. First thing that I wanted to make sure everybody knew about is that River Sport is opening back again. Uh, they're opening up for spring break. And in fact, the River Sport facilities at the river at Lake Overholzer and Lake Hefner are all going to be open um, every day for spring break. So that's sort of a traditional opening weekend. So um, if you guys have not had a chance to go visit the various offerings that they have at River Sport, uh, please, this is a great chance to get out there and do that. Have you guys uh, been down to the river, have, experienced anything in the sort of the river sport milieu? You know? I have been down there, but I haven't done it. I'm, <laughs> I'm not getting in that water. It is, it is, the rapids are really strong, but, uh, but did you see, and I don't even want to admit that I watched The Bachelor, but did you see that? I heard that, that, about that, it. That, I, that, that she took, she brought him down here and, uh, and they did yes. the, the obstacle course or whatever yes, that is. And then, yeah. yeah, so I thought that was cool that, that yeah. we had a bachelorette from Oklahoma City. <laughs> I usually don't watch it. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're betraying your TV watching habits. I know, too, yeah. I know. I think, uh, <laughs> but, but I, I, anyway, so I, I thought that was really great. And River, I mean, that is a world class uh, facility. Yes. I, yeah. um, I think that, um, I think it's just a, another little, um, Gym for Oklahoma, and yeah. Oklahoma is just really growing and becoming an amazing place to live. Absolutely, yeah, it's very cool. Um, and they have some new offerings down there that we've spoken about before, but that you may not know that you may not have uh, uh, had a chance to check out, like the ski facility. You can actually ski in downtown Oklahoma City. Snow ski is really, well. yeah, yeah. So that's it's sort of a a a, a moving um, I don't know infinity type hill sort of setup, and so yeah, you can. Practice all of your various ski moves. I'm a very novice skier, so I don't know much about skiing. It's a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, I'm very novice. So I'd actually like to get out there and you know practice a little bit for the next time I uh, have the opportunity to get out on the slope. So, but yeah, the um, the white water is is for real for sure. It's a mm-hmm. lot of fun. If you're any sort of an adrenaline junkie, you should get out there and and check that out for sure. But yeah, the the sky trail is really neat. Um, the rumble drop is very fun. A lot, all, they have all the slides you can slide down. So. Pretty cool. So, yeah, that is opening up. Uh, I also wanted to mention that Automobile Alley, the Chocolate Decadence event, uh, that is back as well after hiatus from, um, uh, you know, pandemic-related hiatus. So we're back with the chocolate. That's always a good thing. That is April 7th. And so basically the way this works is you can buy a ticket and then you can try a lot of different sort of chocolate-themed items. And they mentioned in their press release that there's going to be uh, live jazz, Tony Foster Jr. and his band, um, silent auctions, all that sort of thing, and as well as a lot of various offerings from George's Liquors and also Prairie Artist Nails, Skydance Brewing, and Vanessa House Beer Company. So those are all sort of automobile alley staples, breweries, so that's very cool. So uh, get out and, and, and check that out. Nate, I've actually been to that event a couple of times. Have you? And it is really, really good. Okay. And so I don't know if that's the same band that they've had in the past, but yeah. they always have great music. Okay. And it's a it's a must do if you like chocolate. That's awesome. And it's not all sweets. It's it's savory. <laughs> it can be savory food made with chocolate. Uh huh. Think um, enchiladas with mole and things like that. Oh, okay. So it's it's really nice. Yeah. Well, it looks. It's something that honestly, it's one of those things that I've always kind of had in the back of my mind. I'd like to try. So I might have to get out there and. Yeah. At this time, mm-hmm. they, they may have gotten me with the beers. I don't know. What what you guys? What what are your favorite local breweries? That's something we talk about on the show a lot. So, <laughs> oh well, you know we love lively. Yes. And um, <laughs> it, I, it, Colin doesn't really drink beer, so okay. um, I I don't I don't drink a lot of beer, but um, I don't. I can't think of anybody all of a sudden. That's fine. Well, Lively is actually a chamber member, so oh, that is a completely acceptable answer to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate that for sure. But yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention, Allied Arts Glow, uh, they have, uh, this is starting on March 11th, but um, they are basically installing some sort of walk-through large-scale art exhibits in Scissor Tail Park. And so the pictures of these look like um, one is sort of a lot of geometric shapes and large cubes and things like that, and and they they're light, they light up, they're interactive, and then uh, the other one is sort of same idea, but it's concentric circles, and you can walk through and interact with it, and it and it does different things. How so, fun! Yeah, so it sounds really like it's a really cool deal, but that's going to start March 11th, and that's going to be uh, open through uh, April 10th, 
and those are named Oscillation and Passage. And so um, those were fully underwritten thanks to the gener- generosity of the Inasmuch Foundation. So, Excellent. There you go. We love them too. Yes. <laughs> yes, as, as, uh, and, and a lot of good work done by the Inasmuch Foundation all around town for sure. Absolutely. So, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention, Elevate. Our professional development event. This is Oklahoma City's professional development event, Elevate OKC. So if you have been looking for a way to sort of beef up your skills or perhaps uh, learn about a new functional area that you'd like to get exposed to, network with with some like-minded, upwardly mobile professional types, this is your event. You don't have to go out of market to do this now. This is why we set this up. So Oklahoma City's professional development event just one day. It's a full day, uh, uh, basically immersion in any types of professional development that you want to get into. So we have multiple different tracks, kind of focusing on different things depending on um, your functional area or what it is that you'd like to get uh, more knowledge about or more exposed to. Uh, We have two really great keynote speakers. All that information, registration, that's available at okcelevate.com. Uh, okcelevate.com, 32 breakout section sessions, eight different career tracks, so lots to choose from. And then we've got, for our two keynotes, uh, we've got Elizabeth Lombardo, and she is uh, Shaquille O'Neal's head coach for happiness. Now, if you've seen his, <laughs> you know, his, his general demeanor seems pretty good, so mm-hmm. I'd say she's probably doing a pretty good job at that. Uh, but she'll talk about the three ingredients you need for success in the new normal. And then we also have Linda Clark, and her talk is going to be entitled in Elevating the Ask, the Art of Transforming Perspective Through Inquiry. So basically how asking questions can lead to a growth mindset and resilience, growth, and trust. Those are three things that we can all use a little bit more of uh, at the present moment, for I sure. Agree. So yeah, okcelevate.com. Get out there, and uh, we want to see you. We're expecting about uh, at least 400 uh, professionals from all around the state, really, not just Oklahoma City, uh, to join us at that event. So that's going to be great. We're, we're all looking forward to that. So, um, yeah. Would you guys like to leave us with anything else before we before we uh, sign off for today? Well, just thank you, Nate, for having us, and um, come see us in Paseo. Yeah, mark your calendar for Memorial Day. You won't regret it. Memorial Day weekend. Do it, do it. Come on down here to the uh, Paseo Arts Festival. Well, guys, thank you very much. We really appreciate your time and uh, the opportunity to speak with you both today. This has been great. And, uh, yeah, we will see you guys uh, on the flip-flop. If you have feedback for us, the best way to get that to us is by just an old-fashioned email. And that is networking at okcchamber.com. Networking at okcchamber.com. If you do want to reach out to us via social media, our social media handles are generally OKC Chamber, so uh, that will work too. But until then, we will see you guys next time. Thanks for joining us.